and welcome to Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, an open-world action investigation game that explores the first steps of Sherlock becoming the world's greatest detective. You are Sherlock, a 21-year-old aspiring private eye who struggles to prove himself to the world. Before you lies Cordona, an exotic island under a British protectorate in the Mediterranean Sea. Don't expect a warm welcome here. Most folks are prejudiced against foreigners, especially those who are well-dressed and easy on the eyes. That makes your job as a rookie detective even more complicated. Whether you're vaccinated or not, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 won't hold your hand as you investigate Cordona's darkest secrets. It's up to you to find your way around the island and to decide what your next step will be. In this video, we want to give you a glimpse at the seemingly elegant paradise and more importantly, the tools that you will have at your disposal to analyze your environment and blend in. Let us also briefly take a look at the island itself. We designed it to be as varied as possible with five unique districts for the player to explore. Each area offers fascinating vistas, colorful characters, and new side quests. The Old City District is an area mostly populated by the Ottoman descendants. Its architectural styles are influenced by Eastern and Southern European cultures. Giant fortress walls, famous Turkish bathhouses, the bazaar and the Caravan Sarai Hotel make it the tourist mecca. The Scaladio District is a bustling administrative center, mostly controlled by the British Empire. This area is as European as it gets, with city hall, cathedrals, museums, banks, and hotels, all built by the Venetians in the before times. Here is Grand Sarai, an uptown district, lined with opulent villas and luxurious establishments. It's a popular exotic vacation destined for the rich. Then we have Miner's End, the poorest district on the island. It is a shanty area, an abandoned silver mine with decrepit buildings and slums. And last, we have Silverton, an industrial district full of factories and warehouses, some intact, some abandoned. Rest assured, each and every one of those districts will treat you like a stranger. Most people won't take you seriously. You sure you're in the right place? We don't serve cocktails here. I'm looking for information about a sailor who recently drowned in Scaladio. Would you happen to know anything about him? Maybe, maybe not. Why would I talk to a landlubber about it, eh? In order to get closer to your suspects and gain their trust, you will need to change your overall appearance and how you act. This is where our new disguise mechanic comes in handy. What can I get you, mate? Nah, I'm good. Don't want to end up like that guy who drowned in the fountain after having one too many. Throughout the game, new outfits can be purchased from vendors or earned by completing quests across the island. There are dozens of outfits, hats, facial accessories, and cosmetic items at your disposal. Use them to customize your Sherlock to your liking and role play as a senior policeman, local trader, or even a pirate to get into closed off areas. Sneak into the police's prison cells or um, private venues as you pursue the truth of Cordona's weirdest transgressions. However, while many situations require a specific outfit, it's only a piece of the puzzle. As a stranger on the island, you will need to approach its citizens and ask for help. There are several social classes within the game like aristocrats, workers, lowlifes, and etc. Knowing who to approach, what questions to ask, and how to disguise yourself is key to getting the job done. Every item you select for your disguise will have to be accurate enough to give you credibility overall, so that each class is more likely to take you seriously and want to share information with you. Ah, it's you! I mean, it's him! It's him! Keep in mind, everyone on the island will react to your new identity either positively or negatively. Asking intel from a policeman while dressed as a thug will get you nowhere. But put on an aristocratic outfit, and some will give you the world. In order to check the potential reaction of someone, use the concentration mode. All the people of Cordona have three different default labels that will help you gain an overall view of who they are. First is ethnicity and occupation. Second is dynamic and will change according to the person and your current disguise. The third is a specific trait of this person. All Cordonians are unique and you'll have to adapt to them to find your way through the island's mysteries. Let me give you an example. We're on the hunt for a mermaid. Apparently there's someone going around killing sailors and the locals believe it's a water nymph. 
While this sounds preposterous, we still need to find the culprit. So where would be the right place to start? Let's choose to head to the local saloon that the sailors frequent and talk to the bartender. The issue is, all we know is the saloon's name, but its whereabouts are sort of on the hush-hush. We can ask one of the sailors about it, but they are unlikely to talk to some fancy pants rich boy. So, here's how I'm going to approach the situation. I'm going to buy a sailor's outfit and put it on. Then, I'm going to open up my casebook, select and pin the right evidence, the one that mentions the name of the saloon. With this piece of evidence pinned, I can approach people on the streets and ask them if they know something about it. Since I'm dressed appropriately, I'm more likely to get a reply. So as you can see, we aim to create gameplay elements that synergize with one another and give you engaging tools that are fun to use. At the same time, we leave it up to you to discover the synergy and think about how and when you want to apply it. After all, what makes a great detective is your intuition. And that's what we want to engage. We want you to use your gut feeling and follow what your intuition says. Thanks for watching our video. I'll see you in the next one.